Hello world, and welcome to a slightly random little talky time slash KSP little short video. Um, today we're just going to be testing a little bit of weaponry. Oh yes, we're going to be making some torpedoes. We're actually in a in a uh, in a test save here where I um, hack gravity about and such, um, just mess about to see what I can do with things and stuff. Yes, and. We're also going to talk about some other stuff as well. So, um, first of all, we've got a target out on the pad, and I made these little S uh, SRB or Sepatron like torpedo things, and they're cool and all, but they spontaneously explode after about 200 meters, which it's, mm, it's not quite what I'd like. And this is how I made them. I think it might be that there's just so many around they're just overheating or traveling so fast they explode or something like that. But we want to make these reloadable so you always have to have a docking port on the back and a docking port in the front so they can be attached to and reloaded into your space cannon <laughs> or whatever you uh, wish to use. Um, let's grab some Cephatrons and just see what how big we can Right. You see, they do clip a bit sometimes. You see. One, two, three, four. Let's do four. And let's hope that that's clearance enough for the docking port and to launch. And <sighs> little trick there. See, that might work. That might work. You know, the idea is that they decouple and fire at the same time and shoot off into the target. So we are going to try out some of these. Uh, either side, one's going to be shot at the target, one's going to be a ranging shot. So uh, we'll fire some salvos. Oh, there we go. Um, we're going to key these with action groups because that is the best way of doing these sorts of things. Um, we're going to have fire the. SRBs on one toggle. Well, this is going to be dual sided. Ah, that'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah, it's fine. And we're also going to have a simultaneous decouple. And for number two, the exactly the same. Rinse and repeat. I've still got a bit of a cold, as you can tell. No doubt. And that one as well. Yeah. I've also been thinking about. Uh, campaign mode again. Um, I stopped doing it for quite a while and well basically the game updated at one point and then we stopped for a little bit while I rejiggled things and redid the rules and then you know we had a good lot of fun and then the game changed again and this forum went down and I lost the rule set because I didn't, couldn't find my backup you know clever I am <laughs> and then I had to rewrite the rules so that delayed us even further and there's just been a lot of delays this year in regards to campaign yeah, and then we got mods out now that do sort of a campaign deal and uh, well that's all cool and everything um, you know they're not not as good as they could be and I've been thinking about bringing campaign back, but in a let's level these out. Once again, mods all in the description. Uh, I'm trying to put every mod in there. If you see, I've got a mod that I haven't listed. Help, let me know because I often forget. Um, yeah, A I E S, A E I S, whatever it is. Anyway, and this is good. This is good. We're gonna just launch it and have a little ball come up. That's weird. Things did go a little bit funny there because I had um, what you call it? Um, fraps still running. So <laughs> First of all we're going to hack gravity. Just infinite RCS fuel for the sake of it. And we'll put that menu down there a bit. Now stability. Didn't put any batteries on this so this will be fun. Oh our target's kind of floating away a little bit. That's funny. We're probably going to ball it over rather than destroy it. Now, that was um, 
Oh yeah, that was uh, Alt F12, by the way, for opening up the debug toolbar. Don't do it; that's cheating. And I don't recommend doing it in a in a regular word because sometimes things can go wrong. Like really, sometimes things can go wrong. Now we're gonna fire a salvo from here, which is about 200 meters. Now we're gonna actually control from here a little bit to get a nav ball and line ourselves up a little bit with that at least. RCS is all messed up because I've uh, toggled that control. There it is, that's the one I want. I got it now. Okay, firing number one. Well, that was weird. That was uh, weird. Oh, look at that go. Alright, let's fire that again. Ooh. That, some SOBs didn't group right on one of the projectiles. That's what happened there. So, uh, we're going to have to take a look at that in the... in the, uh, the VAB and see what happened there. This happens, of course. You have to make sure everything's perfect. Yeah, it's that right one. That's another thing. Um, obviously, you know Isaac Newton's laws of uh, stuff, laws of motion and stuff. So every action has an equal and opposite reaction. If you fire off a damn big rocket in front of you, you're going to get flung out the back a bit. Okay, I think I've aligned this right. We've got legs on it now, and I've fixed it. It was actually a couple of uh, blah 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 blah. The separatron's not in the staging correctly. So let's try round one. Round two. Disintegrate before it hit the target. That was interesting. Alright. Or did it go over? That was weird. Let's uh, relaunch that. Alright, first of all, what we're going to do here is we're going to disable one side of these so we don't have that. And you go away. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go. We just passed through the target. We all saw that. You saw that. Oh, look, monolith. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, getting a bit croaky here. Yeah, we just passed straight through that target. That was interesting. Yeah, you do slow down here with the gravity hack off. That's because we're still actually in an atmosphere. There is still air density to fight against, so you know, drag. Um, I'm kind of happy how it actually stays, you know, true. But the early one did tip down. I think these SOPs might need moving back slightly more. Uh, if you clip a thruster bell sometimes they go a bit weird. We are slowly going down. Um, oh wow. Oh look! That was weird. Did that just redock? Yes it did. That's weird as hell. Anyway, I don't know why I'm even trying to land this. It's unnecessary, but I just feel like I should. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't want to stop moving. These are really cool legs. They're from the AEIS pack or whatever it is. Yeah, look, look at the, look at that animation. Look at that. Can you find better legs? I doubt it. Now. I don't know why we flew through, to be honest. I am, however, going to attempt to make it not happen anymore um, by increasing our own mass, or the mass of the projectile is. That's not the tab I want to be. I want to be in propulsion. I want to try and do those tiny little fuel tanks with the arm. 
you know, the classical um, liquid propelled rockets just have one of these. You know, they're like that, and then. Oh, there we go. And then uh, they actually have the little tiny engine inside there. But we'll see. We'll see. It's going to be weird. Uh, yeah, we'll just uh, fire those off for now, so. We'll uh, try it again. Anyway, here we are again, ready to test. I'm going to see what happens with these ones. Um, as I was saying earlier um, about campaign mode. Oh yeah, I don't know why I did that. Though. That imbalances us, doesn't it? Wow, I'm terrible. Anyway, they are actually... Ooh, that might be bad now. I've done that. Because the counterweight is less. I could be silly. But we'll see how it goes. Fire in the first tail, though, just as a... Okay, that went off target. They flew straighter. I'll straighten those up in a second. We haven't... Oh, sorry, I hit the mic. But we don't seem to have taken any damage to the target, and we kind of flew th straight through it on that other shot. I was talking about campaign mode, and what I want to discuss is why we stopped, basically, in the last campaign, why we stopped playing. Why we stopped playing is quite simple. Um, I think it's that the last episode we lost uh, those astronauts, or the, pre the, astro the episode before that. Now, while that wasn't necessarily pl a problem, we lost those astronauts mm, because the game started to bug out pretty bad. That was in sort of 20. Um, what happened was the game kept crashing as the capture was entering the region where both re-entry heat and fire aerodynamics were working on it pretty hard. Um, well, we got past that, you know, a little bit of editing here and there, and the next thing that happened that wasn't very nice at all was the loss of the space station. Um, this basically occurred when I went to dock something to it, or I went to take a look at some, something on it or something, and basically it, it literally disintegrated, it fell apart into pieces, um, then the game crashed, and when it came back, it was gone. The entire space station was just gone. Then the next version came out, and I, you know, it was the it was the loss. And I thought, you know what? Instead of attempting to restart it for like the fourth time or something, I'll put it, you know, I'll put it on a break because I don't have time to actually defer. Those campaign episodes, there was a lot more thought in them than these random little episodes, and they take a lot of time to do. And I did enjoy them, and I I do want to bring it back, but I've I've got a couple of ideas, but it's depending, you know, what ideas do you have? You think that if we did another campaign series, could you know make it better for everyone and everything? I mean, a part of me wants to add in um, kind of like a war footing. Um, it's, as you see we're making these missile things and stuff and another idea was uh, if I could find someone else to play the rules and uh, it would have to be it would have to be someone I know unfortunately because obviously you know you know how it is you can't just uh, on the fly um, but I, I only know a couple of people who play Kerbal Space Program actually and uh, I'm not really sure how they feel about war in its setting I've never really you know talk to them on that subject so um, I'm gonna look into that and maybe we could have like a co-op uh, campaign of war or, or on a war footing at least that would uh, put a lot more and it would also break up the structure of oh, put a satellite up put a man in space oh, put men in space put men on the moon go to other planet at the end you know it, it would break up that that kind of standard tree structure if you get what I mean. It's that standard path of evolution. Um, but, you know, ideas, welcome. Because um, I've, I've got the time now to actually invest in it, thankfully. I'm going to fire off one salvo and just see what happens. I'm going to fly off one salvo and see what happens. Destroy it. That went straight through again, didn't it? Did 
that literally go just straight through or did it go over? This is funky as hell, man. We're still hacking gravity, so we should be able to just fly over there. Although we are backwards. Turn around this way. So we're going to fly over there and see what's going on. Because that's, that's being a little weird. Yeah. This is entirely a different issue that I was having originally. I hit the mic again. Um, what I was having before is they'd reach 200, 200 to 250 meters and they would explode uh, to the point but it was really good debris field because one of these things, I had 8 sep separatrons on each one then so it was 8 separatrons flying around in circles still with fuel um, plus a strut, plus a couple of docking ports and a fuel tank and you know you fire off two of those, that's, that's kind of a lot of parts flying around in a you know you know that a thirty meter area, and I think little like tear off solar panels and all sorts. So uh, that's pretty good, but it just wasn't working out as a. Uh, I prefer using the the sepatrons for weaponry because you don't have it's less action keys because you just turn them on they go. With a liquid fuel one, you actually have to turn the engine on first, then decouple, so it has to be on a separate button entirely. And there just aren't enough buttons in Kerbal Space Program. Like, really, there are not enough buttons. Okay, at this range. That went straight through. The hell is going on here? It's not because we're hacking gravity. I swear. Shouldn't be. It's never done it before in all my testing. Alright. Jeb, you know you want to ram the bitch. Push it to the limit. Ah, I wish there was Kerbin kind of ground music for this sort of thing. Yeah, it's solid. Why are we flying through it? Hmm. We've succeeded in creating some sort of armor that can just make like phase shift armor or we're, uh, you know, we're a genius in that respect, or we're just breaking something absolutely entirely. Uh, I think this will test it, to be honest. Um, if this doesn't work, then I don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah? That took it out. I am not arming giant SOBs like that on all my vehicles. Can you imagine the weight? Also, uh, since we're kind of done with this target, Let's hack gravity. Ha! <laughs> These little guys inside my target. What ballsy little guys. <laughs> anyway, this is the uh, the little monster that those big torpedoes are actually for. They will be nestled in here and attached there in a big long line. Um, this is why I need to use the, uh, the, the Sepatrons rather than the liquid fuel engine version because, you know, less keys means I can use all the keys on here. That means five each side. That's all action groups. Right now I've got an action group set to uh, the solar panels. Actually, it doesn't seem to do the bridge ones, which is unfortunate. This thing's entirely RCS balanced, by the way. I'm quite pleased with how that came out. Um, crew tank, lots of fuel. Twin nuclear engines. It just has this rather cute bridge. Quite fond of this bridge actually. With its antenna. <laughs> Pretty funky. I'm not going to raise those ones. And to offset the weight up here, uh, this is actually balanced down here. To offset the weight, and if we lose the bridge, we can drop this extra dish down here and it will rebalance the weight out perfectly for us. Uh, I think the only thing that needs to happen if we get rid of all those is we need to disable that thruster I think on the, on the opposing side <laughs> yeah but here we are this is her she's pretty funky I like it um, we got any guys in the back here no but with crew manifest we can um, transfer crew we're gonna transfer from there to the there Update portraits and just close all that crap. And IVA is the bridge. Pretty cramped little one man bridge, but you know. I think she looks pretty cool. 
Yeah, funky. And there we go. Several pounds will fold in. Uh oh. Going down. Abandoned ship. Ah. Are we, are we even going to? Are we even going to fall off? No. We are very well supported right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a fun thing. Um, the only problem with this is this is designed to be your kind of like cruiser size, you know, relatively nice size vessel. And I wanted the weapons to have a good range. And 200 meters for this is, you know, it's not much really. It's out to here-ish. If you can see my cursor, I hope I've got cursor view enabled. Anyway, um, but then it just creates this crap cloud of dust of just debris and shit, which eh, eh. I want something a little more hard hitting. Um, the part of me w originally wanted to make it like a broadsiding thing, like you know, like a battleship, like pew, 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 like broadsides. But then I thought, you know what? It's fire more forward. It's easier. It's fun. We can call it like a bro blockade runner. Sort of thing, you know. A huge sweeping support ship that come in, that would come in with a couple of heavy fighters or something. Yeah. Anyway. That's enough rambling from me, um, talking about campaign. If you have any ideas for, like, um, what I should do for a return of campaign mode, etc, 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 please do say so. <laughs> wow, that disintegrated at time one. Yeah, please do, uh, please do say so in the comments. Yeah, I, I like, uh, I like reading your comments. I like seeing what ideas you have and stuff. What the hell was that? Oh, that is the thing, isn't it? Why is a docking port attached to a docking port? I don't think that was my original design. Oh well. Wee, breakdance. Okay, bye!